devotional thought. Let's turn inside the bulletin for the need for unity. Taken from the Upward Look, page 149. Our great need is unity. We have not one soul that can be spared. The Lord calls upon us to unify in harmony with Bible truth. This should be repeated over and over in the family and in the church. Said Christ, as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do, John 14, 31. He came to our world on a mission from the Father. He came to bridge the gulf that sin had made between God and man. There was to be made a provision for a reconciliation, for a union of the human with the divine nature. Christ would sanctify all who believe in him. In the gift of Christ to our world, God has provided for everyone a power to overcome evil. He has given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 2 Peter 1.4 the great apostasy originally began in a denial of the love of God, as it is plainly revealed in the word. Provision was then made whereby fallen men might have a powerful revelation of the love of God and be given an opportunity to return to his allegiance to Jehovah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 That makes life worth living, doesn't it? We have something to look forward to. I lay down my life for the sheep, says Christ, chapter 10.15. The bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Chapter 6.51 here is a revelation of the power mighty to save to the utmost. God is light and love. After the war in the heavenly courts, Satan and his followers were cast out. As human beings, we are subject to the crafty wiles and temptations of this fallen foe. And unless we are kept by the power of Christ, we shall certainly be led away by the satanic sophistries by which the world is flooded. Our safety is to lean not on human power, on the arm of flesh, but upon the divine arm. Those who are partakers of the divine nature will not be beguiled by Satan. Everyone will be tested. Men professing to be Christians will be placed in positions of trust as guardians over the flock of God. We are God's property. In Jesus Christ, we are to behold a pattern of what we should be. Every soul should be educated to look not to his fellow men, but unto Christ. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Amen. Does anybody else have anything to add? Then, as our custom is, would you please stand with me, and we'll repeat the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy handservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Thank you. We'll begin shortly.